Right. In this video, we'll be going over uh, worksheet four from unit three. Uh, we've done the first couple problems, so I'm going to take a different approach, but then we'll make sure we go over the problem solving strategies that we learned in class. So in the first example, we have a poorly tuned Yugo that can accelerate from rest to a speed of 28 meters per second in 20 seconds. Part A, we are asked to find what the average acceleration of the car is, followed by the distance that it travels in that time. Um, so if we look at um, what the velocity time graph for this car would look like, it begins at rest and it accelerates at a constant uh, with a constant acceleration, we can assume in a positive direction, so it's constantly picking up speed. So the graph should look like that. If we were to make this quantitative, what we could say is that this point right here is at time zero, it has a velocity of zero. And this point up here could correspond to 20 seconds later, where it has a velocity of 28 meters per second. We know that the slope corresponds to the acceleration from this graph. And so if we were to find the slope of the line, we could determine what the acceleration is. So we can do it thinking about it in that way, where the acceleration is the slope, the change in velocity over the time. And we just plug in the points. So you have 28 minus 0 meters per second divided by the time, which is 20 minus 0. And that will equal 28 over 20, which is about 1.4 meters per second squared. Now for part B, we're looking for delta x. Now, the way we did it in class is we would use the delta x equation which delta x equals one half a t squared plus v initial t, but v initial is zero. So we don't even have to write that term. So I can plug in my, and my, uh, my numbers here. In for acceleration, I can put in what I just found, 1.4 meters per second squared, and then the time is 20 seconds, so I need to square that. And what I get is 280 meters. But the other way I can think about that is displacement comes from, uh, graphically, the uh, area under the curve. So if I find the area, I can find what delta x is. Well, this is a triangle. So delta x equals half the base. The base is 20 seconds. And the height is 28 meters per second. Half of 20 is 10 times 28 is 280. And you can see that the units leave us with meters. So again, two ways to get the same result. Uh, number two, at t equals zero, a car has a speed of 30 meters per second. At t equals six seconds, its speed is 14 meters per second. Find the average acceleration during the time interval. So I'm going to take a similar approach by utilizing the graphical method. So the car starts with a positive velocity of 30 meters per second, and then after six seconds has slowed down to 14 meters per second. So that's just that's our velocity time graph. And I'm going to label these points. This point is at time zero. Its velocity is 30 meters per second. And this point corresponds to time 6, where the speed is 14 meters per second. We're asked for the acceleration. So the acceleration corresponds to the slope. A equals delta V over delta T, the change in velocity over time. So we do 14 minus 30 meters per second over 6 minus 0 seconds. We get negative 16 over 6 meters per second squared. And that equals about negative 2.67 meters per second squared. And so the, the slope of this line 
is negative 2.67. Right, moving on, we have number three, a bear spies some honey and takes off from rest, accelerating at a rate of 2.0 meters per second squared. So the bear begins at rest and accelerates. So that's our acceleration time graph. And we know that the honey is 16 meters away and we're looking for how fast the bear will be going when he reaches the honey. So let's utilize our known unknown table now. So I'm going to draw my table. We have known, unknown, our five kinematic variables that we have to take into consideration at all the time are delta x, delta t, a, v initial, and v final. So let's see what the problem gives us. Well, it says that it starts off from rest. So that means that v initial is zero. It says it's accelerating at 2.0 meters per second squared. So we're told our acceleration. And it says that the honey is 16 meters away. So that is our delta x. That's our change in position, how far away is. And that's 16 meters. And what we're asked to find is v final. Out of the five, the thing that we don't have is t. And so forget about t. So this is where you have to pick the right equation. So you would look on your index card at the kinematic equations, and you would look for the equation that does not have t in it. And so the equation that does not have t in it is written like this, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. Let's plug in what we have. So we have v final squared is equal to 0, so I'm not even going to write that. 0 squared is 0, so it's going to be 2 times 2.0 meters per second squared times 16 meters. Now, the last thing I would have to do, besides actually multiplying here, is don't forget about taking the square root of both sides. We're trying to find v final, not v final squared. So make sure that on the left-hand side, it says v final equals. And now you can see that 2 times 2 is 4, so the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 16 is 4 and 2 times 4 is 8. And so the answer is 8 meters per second. Um, anytime you take a square root, you technically get two solutions, positive and negative. Um, we are assuming that the bear is moving in a positive direction. So that's, so the velocity at this later time has to be a positive number. So we could have changed directions. We could have said that the bear was moving in a negative direction, and then we could have chose that the bear reaches a speed of negative 8 meters per second. Either way is correct. Let's take a look at number four. It says a bus moving at 20 meters per second slows at a rate of 4 meters per second every second. How long does it take for the bus to come to a stop? So that is asking us to find the time. So the bus is slowing down from a positive velocity to rest. So there we have our uh, velocity time graph. So let's utilize the known unknown table again for this example. We know that v initial is 20 meters per second. That's how fast the bus was going initially. Now it says it slows at a rate of 4 meters per second squared meters per second each second. So we're told what the acceleration is. We're told how f quickly it's slowing down. Um, but if the velocity is positive, th if the bus is moving forward, then to slow down means that you must have a negative acceleration. So you have to remember to put that negative in there based on the wording of the problem. So the acceleration is negative 4 meters per second squared and we're told that it comes to a stop. So that means v final is zero. We're asked to find the time, delta t. 
how long does it take for it to come to a stop? Well, at first here we want to figure out um, what the time is. Uh, the fifth kinematic variable that we aren't worried about is delta x. We need to pick the equation that does not have delta x in it. And so that would be uh, a equals v final minus v initial over t. And by swapping t and a, we can solve for t. So you get v final minus v initial over a. v final is 0. v initial is 20. And the acceleration is negative 4 meters per second squared. So you get negative 20 over 4. Gives me, since we have two negatives, it gives me a positive 5. The meters cancel. One of the seconds cancels on the bottom and a seconds comes up on top. And so we get 5 seconds. Notice if we didn't put in the negative here for the acceleration, we would have got a negative time can't have that time sticking in a uh, positive way. Time is a scalar. It doesn't depend on direction. Uh, for part B, we want to find delta x. So let's use the delta x formula. So delta x equals 1 half a t squared plus b initial t. And if I plug in all my numbers, I get 1 half times negative 4 meters per second squared times, and I'm utilizing the, the time now from part A, 5 seconds, don't forget to square, plus V initial now, which is 20 meters per second times the time, 50, uh, 5 seconds. This term gets you uh, negative 50 and plus 100, so you get positive 50 meters. Can we do that another way? Yes. How can we do that? Well, now that you have the time, you know that the base of this triangle in your picture is 5 seconds. The height is 20 meters per second, and the area formula for the triangle, which would get us delta x, is 1 half the base times the height. And it gets you the same results. So that's important to know that there's more than one way of completing a problem. What's important is that you show your work and what you do makes sense, has a logic behind it. Moving on, we have number five, a physics student skis down a hill, accelerating at a constant 2.0 meters per second squared. So we are increasing velocity. If it takes her 15 seconds to reach the bottom, what is the length of the slope? So we're looking for delta x. Let's use our known unknown table. So we're told that the acceleration is 2.0 meters per second squared. It takes her 15 seconds to reach the bottom. Delta T is 15 seconds. And the uh, other piece of information that we know is that um, she's, we're assuming that she's starting from rest at the top of the hill. So we can say that v initial is zero. Remember, you need three knowns to solve for an unknown. What we're looking for is delta x. So we want the equation that does not have v final in it. That's the fifth kinematic variable that we, in this case, don't care about. So that is our delta x equation. That delta x equals one half a t squared plus v initial t. There is no v initial, so the second term goes away. So we have 1 half a, which is 2.0 meters 
per second squared times t, which is 15 seconds. Don't forget to square it. And you should get a displacement of 225 meters. Number six, a dog runs down his driveway with an initial speed of five meters per second for eight seconds. So he, he travels with a constant speed of five meters per second for eight seconds. Let's draw ourselves a quantitative uh, velocity time graph. So this is the first eight seconds. So he was going at five meters per second for eight seconds and then uniformly increases his speed to 10 meters per second in five seconds. So this is now 10 and an additional five seconds later. So this means that this time here is 13 seconds. Um, it says what is his acceleration during the second part of the motion? Well, again we can utilize instead of the known unknown table let's try finding the slope of this line segment. So what we have here are two points. The slope of this line gives me the acceleration. So this point corresponds to 8, 5, and this point corresponds to 13, 10. So the acceleration is just the slope, change in velocity, change in time. That would be uh, let's see, we have 10 minus 5 meters per second divided by 13 minus 8 seconds. That's 5 over 5, so we get 1 meter per second squared. That's the acceleration. Now it says, how long is the driveway? So we're looking for delta x. Delta x corresponds to, graphically, the area under the curve. You can see, I think the equations here would, would take you longer. If you could find what the area under this whole graph would be, you could determine what how long the driveway is. So that's what we're going to do. Um, what I see is a giant rectangle here and a small triangle. So this rectangle, so the area of the rectangle equals the base, the total base is 13 times the height, which is 5. And we want to add to that the area of the triangle, and that's half the base. The base has a, a length of 5 seconds and a height of 5 meters per second. So the total area equals the displacement and if you go ahead and do the math that equals 77.5 meters. Alright, number seven. A mountain goat starts a rock slide and the rocks crash down the slope 100 meters. If the rocks reach the bottom in five seconds, what is their acceleration? So the goat starts the rock slide. So we're talking about the motion of the rocks. They start from rest and will accelerate speeding up. So let's try the known unknown table again. The knowns, we know V initial is zero. It says that it comes the uh, crash down the slope which is a hundred meters which is that's the delta x. It's a hundred meters. It's a distance and at the time 
is 5 seconds. We're looking for the acceleration. What don't we have? We don't have V final, so we don't care about V final. What we need is the equation that does not have V final in it, and that is our delta x equals 1 half at squared plus V initial t. Well, I know V initial is 0, so this term goes away. But I'm looking for the acceleration. So what I want to do is I want to take this and solve that for a. So if I multiply both sides by 2, let me do this in, in a different color. So I multiply both sides by 2, then these go away, and I get 2 delta x. And then if I divide both sides by t squared, these go away. And so I solve for a. I get a by itself. So let's plug in what we know. It's 2 times 100 meters divided by 5 seconds squared. And that gives you an acceleration of 8 meters per second squared. Last problem. A car whose initial speed is 30 meters per second slows uniformly to 10 meters per second in 5 seconds. So this value is 30. In 5 seconds, it slows to a speed of 10 meters per second. We find the acceleration. Again, I have a graph. I know acceleration corresponds to the slope of the graph. So if I pick two points, 0 seconds, 30 meters per second, and then at 5 seconds, it's moving at 10 meters per second, I can find the slope. Slope is the change in velocity over time. My points are 10 minus 30 meters per second over 5 minus 0 seconds. So what we get is a slope of negative 4 meters per second squared. It's slowing down. It should be negative. Now part B says determine the distance it travels in the third second. That is between times 2 and 3 meters per second. In order to do that, if you were to use the equations, what you would need to do is find how far did it move in 3 seconds and subtract that from how far it moved in 2 seconds. So how far did it move in a total of 3 seconds minus how far did it move in a time of 2 seconds. That'll get you what you need. The other way of doing that is you could um, cut this graph into segments. So if I said that it, you have 2 and 3 seconds here, then the displacement would correspond to the area of just that slice. So in order to do that, what you would need to know are the dimensions of that slice. And regardless, you're going to have a triangle and a rectangle. So uh, either way, there's some work to be done. Whatever you feel most comfortable with is how you should go about it.